Sixers outside call for snow, but indoors, there should be plenty of fire. Mountain West Conference action closes us out tonight with the Wyoming Cowboys and the Utah State Aggies. And hello to everyone with Joe Cravens. I'm David Gascon. Thanks for joining us tonight on FS1. Joe, got two teams matched up against each other tonight on the men, but for completely different reasons. Well, David, the Cowboys got to figure out how to win a close game. They have already lost six games this season by five or less. They've got to make a play or two at the end of the game to get one over on that left-hand side. The Aggies, on the other hand, they kind of got bushwhacked over at Boise last Saturday. The league's best shooting team shot but 39%, scored 59 points. They've got to get back to doing what they do best, and that's shooting the ball in the hole. And I think being home, they'll do that tonight. Well, it's interesting. Utah State, one of the best benches in all the land. Number one, the Mountain West Conference. But the starting lineup's not too shabby either, is it? Five guys averaging double figures, one of the only teams in the entire nation that can boast that. But they have had an outstanding year at 13 and 3, but still a lot of conference basketball to be played yet. Certainly is the case. Stephen Ashworth making a seventh start of the season this year for Ryan Odom. Utah State 13 and 3, 2 and 1 in conference play. And you just see Odom there. Second season as a leading man with the Aggies. Pretty decent record along the way as well, too. It's it's a program that's on the come. They had some tough losses last season, losing a handful of games by less than seven points. It was one of the teams that was rated up amongst the worst luck amongst the nation. And now he comes into this season, they have been on fire. And Jeff Winter on the other side of things. We asked him earlier today how he felt, and he said, I, I feel like Sean McVay. His team is that beat up. And Joe, he's got eight scholarship players here tonight. Well, back home, they call that buzzard's luck is what he's had this year. He <laughs> hadn't got a break here lately, starting early in the year when they lost the preseason conference player of the year, Graham E.K., who hasn't played a game for him and probably won't. And it has just gone downhill since then. But don't sleep on the Cowboys. They're playing up the storm. They took the two best teams, or two of the top teams in the league last weekend right down to the last possession. And as I said earlier, all they've got to do is make a play or two at the end of the a couple games and their record is completely different. Let's talk about the environment inside D. Glenn Smith Spectrum here in Logan, Utah. It's it's a rowdy bunch. The student section on the north side of things, they will get after the opposition. David, I, I almost go into PTSD coming up here. <laughs> I've coached in this place before. One time we almost won and I went home and had a party. It, it's, it's a tough place to play and it has been for a long time. Opening tip off control by the home team and we were underway. Utah State moving from left to right on your screen. Well, I mean, Cowboys will be going from right to left. Beautiful feet underneath. He's on the board first. Bears go with his first basket of the ball game. It's 2 0. Great first possession. They got four ball reversals on that. Every time you reverse the ball, your shooting percentage goes up. They ended up shooting an uncontested layup there. Odin working baseline. He's cut off, but a foul being called. This will be on Trevin Dorius, his first. Watch this ball reversal to a uh, back screen, and Bearstow starts off with an easy one. Dorius may have a hard time playing in this game because Wyoming is essentially playing small ball and he's going to have a hard time finding someone he can guard. Odin for three, got it. It's a 3-2 lead for the Cowboys. And that's what Jeff Linder wants. He wants an occasional three, six or seven for him a night. Should be pretty darn good for his club. Barry still underneath and one. No, it will not go. But two free throws heading his way. Well, these are the two top three-point shooting teams in terms of uh, shots per made per game. David, with uh, with Utah State making over 10 a game and Wyoming nine a game, so look look for both teams to shoot it early and often from the three-point line. Yeah, Barstow this season at the charity stripe, just 52% on the year. He sinks the first, but yeah, you mentioned it. Top 10 of the Aggies in the nation, three-point percent, 43%, and they're averaging just about 10 threes made per clip. Well, the Aggies have made a living this year from the three-point line. A lot of that has to do with Stephen Ashworth, the nation's leading three-point shooter, who not only leads the nation in percentage at 52, he leads the league in threes made per game at almost four, 3.6. It was a troubling night just a few days ago against Boise State. Aggies got roughed up 82-59. That game was never close either. Well, that was billed as the league's best offense against the best defense, and Boise State uh, 
really kind of uh, boat raced the Aggies as they went over to Boise in the afternoon game. Funk with a hand in his face. Beat Odin and company. Aggies get the fans on their feet early on. Six to three for the home team. Funk was about the only Aggie when they went over to Boise that really shot the ball well. He was five of eight and four or five from the three-point line against the Broncos. Anderson goes up, commits the foul. It's a bad one over against him in his first of the night. Back to that three-pointer being led away. Well, Funk, pretty nice step back there. And at 6'9", with long arm and a high release on his shot, it didn't take him uh, a whole lot of room to let that go. Before he left St. Joe's playing in the A-10, two years in a row, he was second in the league and made threes. So shooting in from three is not something new to him just because he switched schools. Two quick fouls for Anderson. He'll have to sit. He was a focal point of the attack against New Mexico in their loss. The reason being, Hunter Malala fouled out of that contest. And we have a traveling call against the Aggies and Funk. That's his first turnover the evening. Well, we haven't addressed why Stephen Ashworth is even in the, the starting lineup. R Ryland Jones out with yet another concussion. And that's going to shorten the Aggies bench just a little bit. The Wyoming bench is short enough already. One of the keys of the game we'll talk about later, they can ill afford to get him too much foul trouble. Maldonado trying to go to work off window, got the two. How about that? Way, way high off the window. Maldonado in his 143rd game playing for the Cowboys. Shulga to the corner, Bearstow trying to work his funk. Funk cutting straight to the hoop, no good. The rebound, Dorius, no, that will not count. Two free throws that'll go to Taylor Funk. A little bit of a late call there. Look at this high arching shot to Maldonado going to his left, his weak hand. He ends up shooting it with his right. It seems to me in watching him over the years, he prefers the left side of the basket as opposed to the right, even though he's right handed. But where he really goes to work is when he turns his back and starts backing you down from about 15 or 18 feet on in. Funk's first free throw is good. 88% from the charity stripe this season. He had 14 points in that loss to Boise State. As you mentioned, he's the one guy that really showed up on the shooting side of things. Not to say the Aggies had a lack of effort, but it was just the offensive productivity was rather flat. Well, Funk had two, two offensive fouls early in the game over at Boise State, and it kind of took him out of his rhythm the first half. He only had three points at halftime and ended up with 14. So... Uh, and those two offensive uh, fouls on him ended up counting against the 10 turnovers that the Aggies had. To sell, easy left. He missed right back the other way. Sugar's first points the ball game. Aggies have opened things up to a five-point advantage. And that's another guy the Aggies can uh, really need to get on track. Shogo has, str has struggled in conference play, only shooting 36% from the field at 20 from three. And right here's where Maldonado knows that his bread is buttered. And where he hurts you, it's hard to come double team. His vision is always on the middle of the court. Bad play. Ashworth in transition. They like to run up and down the court to the Aggies. Averaging just about 82 points a game this season. When they score over 80, they're pretty much lights out. Well, they are the best offensive team in the league. They, they lead the nation and the Mountain West Conference in three-point percentage and lead the Mountain West Conference in three points made per game, along with being second in field goal percentage. So you've got to stop them at the offensive end if you're going to have any kind of chance of beating them. Maldonado back in his office, swept away at the last second by Funk. I was making a point about Maldonado, and he really likes it down there where he can back in, but he's always got his head up. Look at this basket by Shoga all the way. Great finish. Look at his vision on the rim all the way till the ball goes through. All great finishers keep that chin off the chest. Ben Cole lost the handle on it. It should be a turnover. The officials get together and say that's exactly the case. Akbar Polo, one of those guys is getting some extended minutes with all their injuries, but he came up zeros in their last game. No points, three rebounds, 0 for 4 from the field. He's a very talented kid, long and can shoot it. Well, he didn't have much success against the Aztecs. Ashworth thought about pulling the trigger. Turnaround baseline, right-handed hook by Dorius off the mark, a little too strong for him. Yeah, it was a troubling loss for the 
Cowboys just a couple nights ago against San Diego State. They lost 80 to 75, 17 lead changes in that ball game. And Joe, they shot 61% in the second half and still lost. 58% for the game. They had the lead with five minutes to go in the game. And it goes to what I was talking about earlier. At the end of the game, they've just had trouble coming up with the big play, either the big defensive stop or a big basket made. Uh, six games they've lost by five or less this year. Shulga looking to create, lost the handle for a second. Ashworth is there. Shot clock reads at nine. Shulga with his left hand, three being attacking, scoring. Two great drives by Shaw going to his weak hand to his left hand. And again, watch the way he keeps his head up when that ball leaves his hands. He is one of the best finishers in the Mountain West Conference. Maldonado patient against Dorius. One move, a second one. It was kind of shot clock was at 12. Kyman looked like he traveled, lost the handle on it anyway. Here's Bear still. Bear still to Ashworth. Thought about it. Dorius swiped away at the last second. That'll be on Ducell. So it's all Aggies early on. The seven-point advantage right now. They're really taking it to the Cowboys early on. And that includes the work for Max Shulga. It's 12 to 5. Aggies will be back. Aggies with the advantage right now over the Cowboys. 12 to 5 is the score in the middle of that cluster. And Coach Ryan Odom, the head coach of the Utah State Aggies. Joe, it was a rather curious season last year for the Aggies. They finished 18 and 16 overall, but 8 and 10 in conference play. Oddly enough, they lost nine games last year by seven points or less and won 15 of those games by double digits. It was like you didn't know how to make that team up or how to look at them. They eventually lost the NIT, but that confidence for being in tight games last year, it seems like it's provided a lot of experience, valuable experience to a lot of these returners. They've taken another step. David, I've always thought as a head coach, your level of success each year depends on two things. The year that your seniors have, and that doesn't mean they all have to be stars. They all have to be star role players. They all have to be good teammates. And how many close games uh, that you win or lose. In some years, as I was talking to Jeff Linder before the games, last year that ball bounced their way every time. Nine and two in close games. And this year they can't buy a close game. And sometimes the coach has nothing to do with that. Three point away from Ashworth, his first of the night, no good. Skying up for that rebound. Jeremiah Odin. Back come the Cowboys. Down by seven. Ashworth only went one for four over at Boise last weekend, and he had some good looks. Now, don't get me wrong, Boise guarded him a little bit, but he had a couple of them, and he was standing there measuring that he just couldn't get to go in. Bad pass by Maldonado, picked up. Very still clean break, and he finishes it. Great anticipation by Ashworth there. I talked to him about Maldonado and always having his head up. That's the pass he's looking for is that diagonal pass. Ashworth, I'm sure uh, the scouting report had a lot to do with that. He came from about 20 feet away and stole that and gave Barristow that easy layup at the other end. Poor feed by Maldonado. Aggies made him pay. Maldonado's numbers are down a little bit scoring-wise from last year, but a lot of that has to do with he is now the focal point of everyone's defensive plan. Odin right there carrying a spell. It's a seven-point advantage for the Aggies. Odin, one of the guys who are, is really taking advantage of extended playing time. Coming off the first time this year, he's had back-to-back -back double figures, 13 and 15 against New Mexico and then San Diego State. He has played really well in the last couple of weeks. Shulga almost got it to go off the mark, though. Funk outside for three. Uh, is any coach today the very best time? three-point shot is after an offensive rebound and that was easy a long offensive rebound a little pitch to funk there and it comes up three another poor feed by Maldonado this will be a turnover so instead of Oda chasing that ball down for it to be a backcourt violation the inbound pass is going to come underneath Wyoming's basket a little frustration there by Odom a little bit. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Cowboys. They can ill afford uh, to beat themselves. Their margin of error is not very thick at all, and they can't they can't have two empty trips back-to-back -back and expect to stay in the game. Down 10 already. 
Well, some might criticize what Utah State did the other night against Boise State, their putrid shooting. It was less than 40%. Well, I'd say they fixed things tonight. 67% from the field so far. They're six of nine early on. Well, they're too good a shooting team to have too many nights in a row where they don't shoot it well. They didn't even shoot it very well from the free throw line over at Boise State. Six of 14, 43% from the free throw line. I would venture to say you won't see that again the rest of the year. Anderson with two fouls. The teardrop won't go. Shugo with the defensive rebound. Dan Atkins in the ball game for the Aggies. He is a pest offensively and defensively for the opposition. Well, that's a great rebound by Shulker going up in a crowd with two hands. All good rebounders rebound with two hands like Shulker just did. Odin with the strip. Dussel by his lonesome. Officials have not indicated the basket's good. I believe now they will call yeah. it, yes. I, I think I saw the baseline official call that call that good. Dussel coming off his best outing of the season in that loss to San Diego State, 15 points, 4-5, all from the three-point line. He's a kid that has started a handful of times this year, started a lot last year for Wyoming. And as I talked to the Wyoming coaching staff, in fact, the, the coach standing up there right now, Ken DeWees Jr., his comment to me yesterday is now we're in a position where guys are playing out of position at too many minutes. They've only got eight guys that, that can play there. Yeah, when we get a chance, we will take a peek up and down the bench of Wyoming. You'll see plenty of guys in street clothes, and that's not by design. Now, that's not a good thing, including the preseason player of the year, as I talked about, Graham E.K., who averaged almost a double-double last year, one of the best big guys in the entire country, not played a single second for the Cowboys this year. Attacking, attacking, almost got it to fall down. He thought he was fouled, so everyone else in the building. Anderson in transition really carried it over. Here's Maldonado. At, 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 excuse me, David, one of the one of the most dynamic bench players in all of the nation. Four double doubles, which no one in the nation can can uh, match that. He had trouble just like his last shot over at Boise last week, making one go in around the basket. Maldonado, his shot clock is at six off his shoe tops, lets it fall anyway. And they're called a double dribble. Tell you what, Maldonado, he has these games, Joe, where it's he's hot and cold with turnovers. Looks to be the case early on right now. It's all Aggies. They lead Wyoming by a count of 17-10. We'll be back. So far, so good. Taylor Funk, a transfer from St. Joseph's, got eight points to lead the charge for the Utah State Aggies. They lead right now over Wyoming, 17-10. Joe, I'll tell you what, for as good as Utah State has been so far tonight, it was really the iron and kind against one of the stingiest defenses in the Mountain West Conference a few days ago. Well, I watched that game, David, and I, I hope my friend Leon Rice doesn't hear this. And I know Boise State plays awfully good defense, but I tell you what, Utah State had some great shots that they, they just missed. Steven Ashworth had a couple at three. He was measuring out there and couldn't make them go in. So I would say the combination of Boise State's defense with, and Utah State just missing some wide open shots, and then it kind of snowballed on them. But they're shooting 49% from the field for the year, so it doesn't, shouldn't surprise you that they get back on track pretty quick. Certainly a capable team. Akin goes up with the right hand, got hit in the face, no good, drawn back iron. Dussel with a defensive rebound for the Pokes, and back they come, moving from right to left. Akin had a hard time over the boys. They only two for five and one for four from the free throw line, so he continues to struggle to make it go in. Aldenado step back inside the charity strap, no good. No legs on it. Yeah, he really had the emotions get the best of him in that ball game, too. He wore it on a six. Yes, he did. He got a little chippy uh, over boys in the Idle Rock off the window for two. Idle Rock part of that very, very valuable bench for Utah State. He's a kid that started 30 of 31 games last year. Averaged almost eight points. His role has changed a little bit. He'll probably get some added playing time with Ryland Jones out of the lineup now. Yeah, speaking of average, Utah State's bench averages 32 points a game. That's 10th best in the country number one in the Mountain West Conference. Well, to build on that point of balance, they, they're only one of eight teams in the entire nation that has five double-digit scores on average one. See Anderson trying to cut into that deficit. It's down to 7, 19, 12. 
Look at the size of this backcourt now. They're playing Shogun Bersko at the guard position with Ashworth out. That's that's six eight and six five guards. A very big backcourt. Crab dribble right there from Akin. That's three attempts in close proximity. He's unable to complete. Atkins really struggling, making one go in. Here's Anderson. And this is an interesting matchup here. Bearstow and Anderson. Bearstow really probably taking advantage of that length. But couldn't keep Anderson out of the paint. A nice move from Ethan Anderson, the transfer from Southern Cal. Anderson's an interesting study. I would call him a power point guard. Shulga trying to use some English, no good. Back come the Cowboys down by five, and yet to lead in this contest. And then all of a sudden we say that, and a turnover right there by Ducell, he knew it. And that is the epitome of an unforced turnover there. Watch Anderson here, what I call a power point guard. He just kind of powers by you. I never see him really blow by guys, but what a couple great finishes there. See Anderson right there. Points per game continues to increase. He was under about six and a half, and now he's up to 7.2 officially. They look for fatigue to play a part in this game. This is a quick turnaround. Both these teams played Saturday. They both had to travel. Of course, Wyoming over here, and the Aggies traveling back here. Maldonado played all 40 minutes in their near upset. He hits pass right there for Hamoda. He's got a pretty good feel for the game for an international kid. He got shut out over Boise State last weekend, so it's good to see him get back on track. Slashers, cutters, and then there's Anderson. Can't finish there. Hamoda on the defensive rebound, looking to push. Hamoda. Nice move in the lane. Can't get to fall. Acting active goes up. He's fouled. Two free throws heading his way. What a nice job by Amoda getting that rebound. Forget about an outlet pass. At 6'7", he can bring it like a point guard. Again, getting shut out over Boise State. But here's another great instinctive cut, I call this, by Hamoda. Kid only player to play college basketball from his home country of Baja Rain. Mackin's first free throw is true. 66% from the charity strength. David Baja Rain is south of here someplace. Isn't it? It's a long flight. That's a long <laughs> Speaking of flights. If you're going to play home at home, that's a long <laughs> Well, that's one thing that's nice about Utah State. It's a good international flavor as well. They have six inter international kids and six Utah kids, which is a nice combination. They've always had great Utah players here at Utah State, a very traditional and historic program. Agbunk Bode skies up for it, misses it. Hamoda with the defensive rebound. Good spirit from him early on. Oh. Funk, corner three on the way. Got it. Nice pass by Ashworth. You know, when I, I used to start watching Stephen Ashworth, I knew he was a great shooter, but he's much more than a great shooter. He makes great decisions. He can create shots off the dribble. He is a really good all-round player. Odin trying to walk that baseline and respond no good, but two free throws. Heading his way, but so far is all Aggies in this thing. The lead is now ballooned up to 12, and Taylor Funk is on his way. A perfect three for three from outside. He's got 11. Super wild card weekend on Fox starts this Saturday with the Seahawks taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Regan coverage starts at 2.30 with kickoff at 4.30. Then on Sunday, Saquon Barkley and the Giants take on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings at 4 p.m. Eastern, all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. So the playoff season is here. Aggies trying to get themselves worked into the Mountain West Conference tournament and a whole lot more than that. Being led right now by Taylor Funk, he's been masterful so far. Well, he's not missed a shot yet. 11 points, three of three from the three-point line, two of two from the free throw line. And he was the one guy on this Aggie team last Saturday that shot it pretty well over at Boise State. As I mentioned, he got in early foul trouble, two offensive fouls going to his left to the basket uh, against Boise State to cut down his minutes. The big story right now is the Wyoming preseason all-conference player, Hunter Maldonado, with just two points, three turnovers, only two field goal attempts, one of two. 
And it just feels like he's really trying so hard to carry his team offensively, and nothing's coming easy. And as I say, he is the focal point of the Aggies' defense. Odin misses the first free throw and also the second one. Back to Funk real quick. It's the 13th time this season he scored in double digits. 86th in his career. Ashworth around the screen. Kick out on the right side. Wide open three-pointer on the way. Idle Rock misses that one. Here comes Anderson. Nice crossing action there to get Ashworth, I think. They're trying to get Ashworth a look there, but he is such a good passer. That ball hits his hand. And he doesn't always make a spectacular pass. He always makes the appropriate pass, which makes him even more valuable. It's the one luxury with Utah State. They share the basketball. Kyman for three-point range. It's a bad miss right there. Akin hustling, winning that rebound. Kyman's a guy who's getting a lot of opportunities now with this depleted bench, and he just can't seem to get much going with those opportunities. A transfer from UCLA. Rock down though. Hacken using the shoulder. Great some separation. No good. Too strong on it. Oda with the defensive rebound. Back comes Maldonado and company. Atkin must think there's a lid on that basket. I mean, he cannot make one go in. That's his fourth, I think, right around the basket tonight. And the same thing happened over at Boise to him. Anderson using his size and his muscle, quieting things down a little bit. Quite a spell of about three minutes of a scoring drought for the Pokes. I call Anderson that power point guard for a guy at 6 1. He's an outstanding rebounder as well. He's had a couple rebounding games where he's had nine and eight uh, this season. Just very, very strong. Like I say, he doesn't blow by you. He just kind of muscles by you. Now remember, he's taken that over Taylor Funk, 6 9. And not only did he score, he uh, dealt out a little punishment to Funk's face as he was making that one go in. Bear still back in the contest. So Atkins out there. Pomona. Funk as well. Ashworth cutting again. That's beautiful. The setup was nice. Ashworth on the delivery. Funk going up. He was hacked. And two free throws heading his way. Great movement by Utah State. One of the things I've noticed, everyone talks about how well they shoot it, how they move. Their spacing is outstanding. Funk spaced that away from the ball all the way out to the corner, and that way Ashworth dribbled that dribbled toward him, and he read that back cut. That was a terrific little two-man game between Ashworth and Funk. Uh, the occasional broadcaster's jinx will come at some point. Funk so far three for three from long range and three for three from the charity strike. He's got 12 points from counting. And you got to like his shoes. That's pink and white shoes. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm all over them. Uh, you got the style points and everything. Dorius back in. I was. I, I said early in the game it was going to be hard for him to play in this game because there's no, no big guy, no low block guy for the Cowboys. He's matched up against Oldham and. I see it done by Dorius at seven foot one. Easy swat against Odin. Clean block. And I said Dorius couldn't play. He must have heard me or someone told him and he, Odin tried to take him to the rack and. Big time Dory 7-1, 240 pounds. He's big enough to go bear hunting with the switch. By far and away the biggest guy on the court. Agbun Polo in the corner. Ashworth size advantage for Agbun Polo. Way too easy there. Classic mismatch there. Ashworth did a pretty good job of staying in front of him, making him score over him. Bear still from 15 feet off the mark. Anderson with the rebound. Just about five minutes to go in this opening half. Cowboys trying to calm things down. They had a mere one point lead early on, but ever since it's been the Aggies. Maldonado. Maldonado still setting on two points, one of two from the field. There's Kyman near the elbow. It's it. This guy I said could, could really help himself making the most of this. Opportunities getting he had two points against San Diego State, only one for four. But he's supposed to be a shooter the transfer from UCLA, originally from Southern California. Top 25, the EP pulls back out. Houston, number one across the land. But a few teams on the come from the West Coast UCLA, Gonzaga, Arizona, of course. And oh, by the way, San Diego State's lurking again. I tell you, that San Diego State team, Wyoming played them right down to the end last Saturday with a chance to win with five minutes left Wyoming had to leap but I don't know when the last time I saw a team with the bodies on the San Diego State has my gosh they look like they put five linebackers 
out there on the court. Man, they were impressive physically. Uh, Matt Bradley, one of the closers in that squad for the Aztecs, did a lot of the heavy lifting in that contest at 18 points in the victory. Lamont Butler led the way with 23 in that five-point victory in Laramie. Cash were second free throws off the mark. And the Cowboys, the game before that, plays the last undefeated team in the nation, the Lobos from New Mexico, down to a one-point game. Two of the best teams in the league, they get beat by one, they get beat by five. Again, they just they just cannot finish a game, and a lot of that has to do with guys who are hurt and the uh, lack of a, a, a deep bench. Coach Cole thought about it. Odin, ball fake. Plenty of contact there. That's a easy shot by Dorius. It's a clean form shooter. Speaking of linebackers there, Joe. Well, I said he's big enough to go bear hunting with a switch at 7 1, 240. <laughs> he actually moved pretty well laterally there, laterally, had he not uh, held his forearm up. And that's uh, that's a pretty easy foul for an official to see. But I was really impressed with his lateral quickness. Moving the feet. Not worried about the basketball, but he'll sit for a few. Shot clock is at 14 for Maldonado. Hey, watch Stephen Ashworth work on defense. I mean, he was working like a government mule away from the ball, just all over the place. That kid has a big heart and a big motor. Shulga, Bear still. Here's Funk again. Funk been ripping up Wyoming. He's got 13 points. Perfect on the night. Shulga completes it. A nice reverse. So it seems like, Joe, every time Wyoming has a punch, Utah State has a complete counter against them. Utah State is so good offensively. One of the reasons they're so good, they've got five guys that average double figures, so it's hard to concentrate on one guy, and they do a great job of sharing the ball. Ragnar Polo never had a chance in that three-pointer with Funk closing out nicely. Here comes Bear still with three and a half to play in this opening half. Aggies trying to get their 14th win of the season. Ashworth was cut off. Good defense from Anderson. Funk from three. It's his first miss. Acula cleaning up though. His first basket of the night. Look at that match. He feels a lot better now. Finally, Atkin make, makes one go in. A kid that has four double doubles this year. One of the most valuable bench players in the entire nation. And Maldonado finally getting it going a little bit offensively. As I said, he loves that left side. Very seldom do you see him operate from the right side. We got a foul being called against Ashworth. He's not happy about it. Under four minutes to play here in this opening half. Aggies have had as much of a 13-point lead. They're cruising right now. 33-22. We'll be back. Aggies right now over the Cowboys, 33-22. Joe Cravens, David Gascon with you courtside here in Logan, Utah. You see right now the bench, the Pokes, and Jeff Linder. He's had a trying time so far this season, Joe, not because of any kind of fallback from productivity, but just the availability of a lot of his A-plus talent. Well, seemingly every week someone else is getting hurt. You know, right in the early in the second half against San Diego State, Brendan Winslow, a kid who has started virtually all year for him, had 14 points, had not missed a shot, 5-5, five 4-4 five, four four from the three-point line. He goes down with a leg injury. Now he's out for a month. And I mean, they're not losing guys in, in practice or before a game. They're losing guys about every other game that are out for weeks at a time. Here's Maldonado on that left side again. Look at him. Watch him with his head up. Watch the Aggie defense all, all head on a swivel, looking for where he's going to throw that ball. You're too hot on that feed from Anderson. A little too tall as well for Kyman. Six turnovers. Bears still clear break. Watch him. that the Aggies have brought it length to the floor all the way to the basket. Jeff Linder cannot be real happy with their transition defense. With no hook on in retaliation from the big man. Anytime you let the ball get dribbled into the paint, bad things are going to happen if you're the defensive team. Anderson, nice two-foot jump stop and just a little toss to that slam dunk. And we got Akin down on the deck, grabbing his left knee in agony. We'll go back to that as both teams will head to their respective benches. But I'll tell you what, Joe. Watch Bearstow here bringing it the length of the court. Kyman yelling for help. Kyman 
Should have picked that ball up a little bit earlier and what a nice little dish by Anderson. Yeah, Anderson from Los Angeles channeling the Irving Magic Johnson from the Showtime <laughs> Lakers. But the concern right now is for the big man Atkin being attended to right now. Anderson had a pretty respectable game against the big bodied Aztecs. Nine points, five rebounds, three assists. Speaking of big bodies, he didn't have to give up a whole lot. Uh, He's 6'1", 208 pounds. He's one of the bigger point guards around. Athletic trainer Leah Dunnigan attending to Atkin. I think Atkin probably bumped knees there. That just hurts like the Dickens when it happens, and it goes away before too long. And Atkin's a big old strong kid. He's not going to sit out too long. Six foot nine and 225 pounds. The Aggies going with a little. Smaller lineup now with Z Hamoda, who gave him a lot of energy early in this half. Even though I said he got shut out over against Boise State, he looks bigger than six seven to me. I mean, he's he's long. He's six seven and got arms from here to Hoboken, and I think that makes him about six nine. It looks like. He played in 19 minutes against the Broncos at Boise State. Shot clock is at two. Ashworth, the prayer, never had a chance. It's a bad sequence right there after the injury for Mackett. You know, one of the things that makes the Aggies so good, if, if your defensive game plan, you think we got to stop Ashworth, got to stop Ashworth. Ashworth only has one point right now, but three assists and two steals, and he has really made that offense run. Yeah, and, the, and Jeff Linder was quite candid with us about that. He said the one thing I'm worried about is the spacing and the separation offensively for the Aggies. I told you that's one of the best things they do is space the court when they're really going spacing the court and moving the ball. They really remind me of the old Golden State Warriors in Golden State Warriors heyday where they had that great spacing with all those good shooters and they do. They really space the court pass the ball. They're very very hard to guard obviously the Golden State Warriors heyday. Well, you know, <laughs> Joe, Joe, might be some people a little upset in Northern California that you say that. You think, you think Steph Curry will call yeah. me tonight and say, hey, 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 you know. It, but, interesting, because Steph Curry returns tonight for Golden State, and just an hour south of us, Donovan Mitchell returns oh, against the Utah Jazz. So a highly decorated player for the Utah Jazz making his return with the Cleveland Cavaliers after an injury. So a couple pretty good guards there. Yeah, pretty decent. I, you might get some pushback. Now you don't have social media, so you're protected. You won't get me any kind of uh, hate emails. You know, I'm still I'm still struggling to call waiting, let alone social media. <laughs> I, I haven't got that mastered quite yet. Well, you showed me your calling card from back in the day in your hip pocket, so you got that. <laughs> I don't know if you stopped the rotary phone, but it's all good. Back to action we go with about 95 seconds to go in this opening half. Owen, patient, deliberate, size advance, step back, fall away, won't fall down. Barry still with the rebound. Here comes Ashman. If the Cowboys can get this down under double digits, they'll go in the locker room feeling pretty decent about things, I think. Low scoring affair, though, only 24 points by the Cowboys. Oh, clean up there for fun. Inside movement against the Cowboys, and that lead now is up to 13 points. You know, Taylor Funk is making a very, very strong case of being the newcomer of the year here early in the season. He is all over the conference stats. A six nine a kid that can shoot it, rebound it. Good defense there against Odin as well. Barry still back to Funk. He's four for five from the field in this ball game. Good for 15 points. No one's even close. Shulga. Barry still back to Shulga. Matched up with Ducell. Funk. Watch out. Corner three. Yes, sir. And that's that great spacing and Max Shoga. That was textbook draw and kick. Just drive that ball to the lane, draw a couple defenders, and find Funk. And Funk wasn't in that corner over there by mistake. He knew exactly what was going on. Well, it was good for the Broncos a few days ago. It was good for the Aggies. Utah State trailed on Saturday to Boise State at the end of the opening half by 15 points. Tonight, they're leading by 16. It's their largest lead of the contest. And now the officials talking about this in the foul as Maldonado go. It's a bonus situation, one and one. And a foul being called against Barristow, his second. Well, they shot the ball to the team of 39%. The Aggies I'm referring to over at Boise State. And I would have bet my mother-in-law's 
car keys. They weren't going to shoot that bad here in the spectrum coming back home. What kind of car does she drive? Well, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> the reason I'm not, not that worried about losing it. But you just knew the Aggies weren't going to shoot it two times in a row that bad. Now, Stephen Ashworth still hasn't gotten off yet. I've only got him down for one point, but he, as I said, is doing a whole bunch of other things to make this Aggie offense go. Maldonado knocks down both free throws. Timeout being called, 17.7 to go in this first half. It's a 14 point advantage for Utah State. They're trying to search for that knockout punch. Back to Wyoming, though, Joe. Last season, 25 and 9, 13 and 5 in the Mountain West Conference. And we speak about that in Mountain West Conference tonight. Air Force beating Colorado State in overtime. San Jose State, a much better team from a year ago. Spartans with an eight point lead over Fresno State. And then those Aztecs and Nevada right now. 11 point lead. Nevada's a top team right now in the Mountain West Conference, but again, it's real. Well, Nevada has won six straight games. San Diego State, five straight games. As you said, still a lot of basketball to be played yet, and San Jose all of a sudden has become very relevant under Tim Miles. What a great job he's done over there. We all know what he did over Colorado State several years ago. Outstanding coach, outstanding guy. This is a very, very good year in the Mountain West Conference. Felt like that last year, and then all of a sudden, the conference tournament showcased a couple teams that were supposed to be considered dark horses in the tournament. Didn't pan out that way. That shot from Suga, back iron, rebound, Maldonado from half court, it won't go. But a rather troublesome first half for Wyoming. They hit a locker room right now, Joe, down by 14 points. They need some help. Well, I'm not too sure that the Cowboys are all that bad as much as the Utah State Aggies and Taylor Funk are having a pretty good first half. The, the Cowboys need to regroup and try to get their offense going a little bit. Maldonado, you got to feel like may be fatigued. He played all 40 minutes against the Aztecs. Somebody needs to put a body on Taylor Funk as well. 18 points so far. Five of six from the field, four of five from downtown. Aggies on their way, leading by 14. 